Hello everyone. As you know, we have been studying about unit four of the geotechnical engineering subject. So under unit four, two topics are there. One is stress distribution in soil and second is the shear strength. We have already completed a stress distribution in soil and we have started shear strength. So as far as shear strength chapter is concerned, under this chapter, we have studied how we can determine shear strength parameters. So whenever you talk about shear strength parameters, that means how we can determine the cohesion and angle of shearing resistance. So for this, we have already, already discussed about the trigeal shear test. And under the trigeal shear test, we have also completed many, many things like uh, unconsolidated and drain test, consolidated and drain test, consolidated drain test. So how these uh, uh, methods we can use to determine the shear strength parameters. We have also studied about the direct shear test, unconfined compression test. So these uh, topics already we have covered. So today we shall uh, talk about the new topic that is Eskampton pore pressure parameters that is also called as pore pressure coefficients. See, whenever you talk about the shear strength of the soil, that means we have to know about the effective stress, total stress and neutral stress. See, what it says that it is well understood that effective stress says rather than total stresses control the shear strength of the soil. So it is well known that the effective stress normally control the shear strength of the soil, right? So whenever you talk about the effective stress, that means the total stress effective stress and poor water pressures. See, the effective stress is directly related to the magnitude of pore pressure parameters or pore water pressures, right? Or that is also called a neutral stress. So what it says, has the change in pore water pressure due to change in applied stress during an undrained trigeal shear test. See, undrained trigeal test, uh, that is also called as UU test, uh, unconsolidated undrained test. And in this test, we have already discussed that the drainage valves are closed during the consolidation stage and the shear shearing stage, right? So this, uh, what does it mean? Whenever we are going to apply the stresses, the change in pore water pressure takes place, right? And what it has been said here, the whenever the the, the stresses are going to be applied, whether it may be the the either during the consolidation stage or the shearing stage, definitely the pore water pressure is going to be developed during the shearing stage. That may be explained in terms of empirical coefficients, which are called as pore pressure parameters. The pore water pressure is usually measured in the field by installing piezometers. See, in the field, we can measure the pore water pressure by using the piezometers. That piezometers can be installed in the field, but in some cases, it is difficult to install. It is uh, impractical to install the piezometers in the field, right? So in that case, what we can do for this, AWS Kempton, S. Kempton develop, right? Poor pressure, poor water pressure coefficient or poor, press, poor water pressure parameters. So for what it has been said here, for such cases, a theoretical method for the determination of poor water pressure was first introduced by Professor A. W. S. Kempton. 
So as here, you can see it is written that uh, it is impractical in some cases to install the piezometers in the field. So the Scampton developed the, the some theoretical methods by which we uh, can determine the pore pressure parameters. We can see here, he has derived one formula. Let us uh, discuss about uh, that formula, uh, how this formula can be derived. Let us take uh, the soil element, right? Let us consider the three dimensional soil mass, which is equilibrium under three principal stresses, sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. You can see sigma one, sigma two, sigma three on this uh, cubical soil element. These pressures are working, okay? So in the beginning, what is going to happen? Once pressure is not applied, at that time, the, the, the pore water pressure will be zero in the beginning, right? Because the, the, these, uh, the principal stresses have not been applied. So once it is not going to be applied, the pore water pressure will be zero in the beginning. But what it says here, let the soil element be subjected to increasing three principal stresses. Suppose you are, uh, we are going to apply these three principal stresses by delta sigma one, delta sigma two, delta sigma three on this soil element. So once you are going to apply the pressure from all the sides of the sample, right? Or the soil element, what is going to happen? You can see it is written here, due to the application of all round pressures, all round pressures, some decrease in volume of the soil will take place while some load will be taken up by the water, thereby increasing the pore pressures. What does it mean? <clears throat> you can see whenever you are going to, in the beginning, pore water pressure is zero because these pressures are not going to work. Sigma one, sigma two, sigma three is, uh, are not working. But once it, uh, we are going to apply this pressure by increment of delta, Suppose delta sigma one, delta sigma two, delta sigma three, right? Here delta, this will be the delta sigma two. It is a, it should be delta sigma two, not delta sigma three. So, so you can see this, uh, this uh, pressures, if you are going to apply the pressures from all sides, see here, what does it mean by delta sigma three? You have to remember. We can remember the trigeal shear test uh, during the U test, we are we have been using the constant cell pressure to develop the pressure surrounding the soil, which is nothing but sigma three, right? And definitely that pressure is the known pressure, which may be 0.5 kg per cm square, 1 kg per cm square, 1.5 kg per cm square. So likewise, the sigma three, delta sigma three, the pressures are pressure is going to increase. So one pressure is going to increase, definitely the volume of the soil element is going to decrease. And as we know, the void, the voids are available in the soil. So you are going to compress the soil from all the sides in, uh, when, uh, in, at that time, what is going to happen? Whatever the water is there in the, the pores uh, or the voids, uh, the pore water pressure is going to increase because we are going to apply the pressure from the, all the sides. So suppose delta V represent the change, uh, change in soil volume. If this uh, soil element is going to be decreased, is going to be uh, applied the pressures in at that time, what is going to happen? The volume delta, is, is, there is a decrease in volume delta V from the, all the sides of the sample. Okay, so correspondingly, what is going to happen? The volume is going to decrease, and the the correspondingly the the, uh, the water the pore water pressure is also going to increase because we are going to compress the sample. The volume decreases, the the pore water pressure which exists in the pores or the voids uh, is going to increase. So let us see further. As we know, we have also studied the, about the total stress, neutral stress, and effective stress. Then what is going to happen? 
then the net increase in effective stage on the soil mass can be written as the delta sigma 1 that means this is the effective stage total stage minus the pore water pressures so what will be the effective stage the, the, the whatever the stage we are going to apply and accordingly how much pore water pressure is going to increase so that that is going to be subtracted we shall get the effective stress, change in effective stress. Similarly, in all the directions, in the in, the, in case of delta uh, sigma 2, right, for the delta sigma 3, that's also we can, for all the directions, we can get the effective stress in the form of total stress and pore water pressures. Now, this soil element is going to be compressed from all the sides due to the application of sigma 1 and sigma 2 and sigma 3, in that case, the, we can write the volumetric strain, which will be equal to change in volume divided by the original volume, right? And suppose, if the this volumetric strain, volumetric strain with uh, delta V by the capital V, delta V is the change in volume, and V is the original volume of the sample. So, if the, the, the strain, the change in strain is epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and epsilon 3 in all the direction, right? So this uh, change in strain, right? The, the, the strain uh, in a different direction, the different as means all the three directions. Well, we can write, see, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3 are the strains in the direction of the three principal stresses, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. They can be expressed in terms of modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio. We can write uh, this uh, values of epsilon one, epsilon two, epsilon three. Right? These are the strains in all the th three directions in the form of modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio. We can see this uh, topic uh, volumetric strain also we have studied in mechanics of solid or strength of materials. Right? When the, the three the stresses are going to work on the a cubical surface, uh, then uh, how we can uh, uh, write the, uh, the, the strain in the form of a uh, modulus of velocity and Poisson's ratio. Now we can see the equation. This uh, equation, epsilon 1, we can write in the form of a effective stress, Poisson's ratio, and Young modulus of velocity in this form. Similarly, epsilon 2 also we can write and epsilon 3 also we can write. So if you are going to add this uh, a strain in all the three direction, it will be def definitely it will be equal to the volumetric strain, total volumetric strain, right? So, <clears throat> so we can write the delta V by capital V. We can uh, add all this uh, strain in all the, for all the directions, which will be equal to like this way. So now if you are going to substitute uh, the values of epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3, which we have uh, seen in the previous slide, uh, then this value will be, the equation will be like this way, 1 minus 2 mu by E into delta sigma 1 dash plus delta sigma 2 dash plus delta sigma 3 dash. So further, we can also write this equation in this form. So. 3 into 1 minus 2 mu divided by E, we can say it as a coefficient of uh, uh, volume compressibility. Cv we can write here. So what we can say, the, the Cv is the not, Cv nothing but, it is a ratio of the volumetric strain to the average values of the effective stress. Like that we can write, which is a constant, right? So we can see here, CV is called the volume compressibility of the soil, CV, right? So now we can see, <clears throat> using the Terzaghi principle of effective stress, what is the Terzaghi principle of effective stress? The, the Terzaghi has said, this principle states that the difference between the total stress and pore water pressure is nothing but is the effective stress. So, we can use the total principal stress increment here and 
the Eskimpton pore water pressure was developed for the undrained test. That means unconsolidated undrained test. That means no drainage is permitted, either in shearing, uh, either in consolidation stage or in shearing stage. So let delta u be the increase in pore water pressures. So in the form of this uh, uh, effective stress, we can write in the form of a total stress and pore water pressure. So if you are going to substitute these values in equation four, which we have seen in the previous slides and also it is given here. So these effective stresses are going to be replaced by these values, delta sigma or minus e, delta u. So once you replace it, then what we shall get? We can get the value v, delta v is equal to v into cv into 1 by 3. Uh, and then the, in the bracket, delta sigma 1 plus delta sigma 2 plus delta sigma 3 minus 3 delta u. So what is the idea behind this? Uh, we, have to, we have to know. Actually, whenever we are going to compress a soil element or a, a soil sample, right? Uh, we can take the example of U test also. So if you are going to compress the soil element, what is going to happen? The volume is going to change, right? Because we are compressing from all the sides, all the three principal stresses are working. And whatever the volume of void is there inside the soil, right? And the voids, the pore fluids are there or the pore water may be there. So that is also going to change. Once you are going to compress the soil, definitely pore water pressure is going to increase. So let us see what is the idea behind this. Decrease in volume of soil element causes increase in pore water pressure. How? Because we are compressing the soil using the three principal stresses. So the pore water pressure is going to increase. So increase in pore water pressure, once the press, pore water pressure is going to increase, it causes change in volume of the pore fluid. The volume of the pore fluid is going to change because the pressure is due to the increase in pore water pressure. So two uh, the things are here. We can see volume of pore fluid and volume of soil sediment. These, two, th these are the two important points. And on these two important points only, your whole derivations uh, are dependent or whole derivation depends, we can say. So we can see whenever we talk about the volume of voids, uh, we talked about delta, by, delta V by V. That means when you are going to compress this well, how the volume is going to decrease delta V and corresponding the pore water pressure which is available in the soil parts is go, are going to increase. So for, let us talk about the, the void or the pore water pressure or the volume of voids we can say. See, as we know, porosity is equal to volume of void by total volume. Then volume of void we can write, volume of void or volume of pore fluid, right? Because the pore fluids are available in the volume of voids, uh, in the void itself. So which will be equal to volume of void is equal to n into v. This formula also we have discussed. So now what is assumed here? Pore fluid is assumed to show a linear relationship between the volume change and stresses. What does it mean? That means if you are going to draw the, a graph in between the volume and the stress, a linear graphs we can get. That means whatever the stress we are going to apply accordingly, the volume of the void is also going to change. That is the meaning. That, that, is, called, that is called a linear relationship. As the volume, uh, in, in, as the volume decreases uh, parallelly, it is also going to influence the stresses, right? Suppose on the x-axis, stress is there, and on the y-axis, volume is there. So what is going to happen? If volume is going to decrease, stress is going to increase, Right? So linear relationships say what it is says that a pore fluid is assumed to show a linear relationship uh, in the volume change and the stress. Let us see further. Let the coefficient of volume change or coefficient of volume compressivity or pore fluid is represented by CW. Volume compressivity of a pore fluid, it is also called as coefficient of volume compressibility. So what we can write then change in volume of pore fluid, delta Vw, 
how how it is going to change because you are going to compress the soil element that is equal to delta v so correspondingly the change in pore fluid is the delta v w so delta v w we can write uh, uh, the delta v w right change in volume uh, volume of pore fluid and volume of void as we know nv porosity into total volume due to increase in pore water pressure delta u under condition of no drainage see always we have been talking about no drainage that means undrained test no drainage is permitted either during the consolidation stage and shearing stage so what it said that uh, that this uh, must be equal to the volume change uh, in soil element given by the equation 7 <clears throat> so we can see here the coefficient of volume compressibility we have already discussed uh, in the consolidation chapter that the uh, the volume coefficient of volume compressibility there we have written mv is equal to volumetric stress volumetric strain divided by change in pressure that we have already discussed in consolidation chapter now the same idea and same principle is here the coefficient of volume compressibility is equal to change in volume of void divided by the volume of void nv what is the nv nv is nothing but it is the volume of void so how much volume that this is the total volume of voids so how much volume of void is going to change change in volume of void divided by the total volume and divided by change in pore water pressures so this is called as cw so further <clears throat> this we can also write like this way delta v delta v w will be n into v into c w into delta u like that we can write this equation so further we can see as uh, i as i told you in the beginning it is a, it is actually the derivation of the uh, skempton pore water pressure is very simple only two things we have to keep in our mind what is the what are the two things the first is whenever you are going to compress this fire by applying the three stresses uh, that means uh, three principal stresses the volume is going to decrease delta v right that is the delta v and corresponding how much uh, the volume is going to change the volume of change volume, volume of change means volume of void how much volume of void is going to change that is the meaning so that is equal to delta v w so this will be equal to uh, delta v right so we shall equate 7 and 8 then what we shall get we shall see in the next slide so this will be equal to this values so further v and v will go and again further we can simplify cv into 1 by 3 delta sigma 1 plus delta sigma 2 plus delta sigma 3 minus 3 delta u is equal to ncw delta u normally as you know we used to consider the intermediate principal stress and the uh, this uh, minimum principal stress equal right so further what is going to happen this uh, delta uh, sigma 2 will be equal to delta sigma 3 then we can write this equation cv into 1 by 3 delta sigma 1 plus 2 de delta sigma 3 and uh, this we are going to multiply by this value minus 3 delta u so it would be equal to minus cv into 1 by 3 3 delta u it will be equal to like this way so further we can also write the cv <clears throat> into delta sigma 1 plus 2 delta sigma 3 by 3 and this we can take it on right hand side so n cw into delta u plus cv into 1 by 3 into 3 uh, delta u so now what we are going to do this left hand side we shall keep as it is and in right hand side we shall we are going to take the common cv delta u we, we are going to take the common in in this uh, right hand side values so once you take the common what we shall get this 3 and this 3 will go so cv delta u is equal to uh, in the bracket 1 plus n cw divided by cv so this cv and this will will be a strike out so what value we shall get delta u is equal to 1 by delta u is equal to this will go uh, in the left hand side so 1 by n plus cw by cv 
into uh, delta sigma 1 plus 2 delta sigma 3 by 3. So further, we can also write this equation. We can also write this uh, delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. Uh, in place of 2 delta sigma 3, we can write these values. Okay. So further, we can see whenever you talk about delta u, the delta u will be equal to 1 by 1 plus n Cw by Cv. And this 3 delta sigma by 3 will be here. We can write. And then 1 by 3 into delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. So this Kempton, what he did? Actually, he can assume these values 1 by 1 plus n Cw by Cv as a, uh, as a coefficient b. And this uh, delta sigma 3 plus 1 by 3, he has assumed a. So a and b are called as pore water pressure parameters or Skempton pore pressure coefficient. So you can see here, this pore pressure is the, the pore pressures, you can see the pore pressure is the having the relation between the total stress and the pore pressure coefficient. You can see this, the, the, B, the B will be uh, equal to these values and A will be equal to 1 by 3. So these are the pore pressure parameters. These are called these are called as B and A are called as Schempter pore pressure parameters. So once again, I would like to tell you that Cb the volume of compressivity of swell, and Cw is the volume com volume compressivity of the pore fluid. Now we can see the next topic: swell liquefaction. What do you mean by swell liquefaction? Liquefaction is a phenomenon in which saturated sand loses its shear strength and develops characteristic like liquid due to sudden shock and vibration caused by the blasting earthquake. Suppose in the Gulf country, soil is fully saturated below the sandy soil is fully saturated below the base of the footing, right? And if earthquake occurs or any, suppose the sudden shock is there due to the blasting, or earthquake is going to happen. So definitely the vibration is going to cost, right? So due to the vibration, what is going to happen? Whatever the pore water pressures are there, that pore water pressure is going to increase, right? And uh, this uh, whole swell is going to become in the form of a liquid. That means the shear strength, uh, uh, the shear strength is going to be loosed. Shear strength is going to be changed. That's why it is said here, in this phenomenon, the space between individual particles is completely filled with water, right? Because of the sudden shock and the vibration. So prior to an earthquake, the water pressure is relatively low. However, the earthquake shaking can cause the water pressure to increase to the point where the swell particles can readily move with respect to each other, right? So once, uh, earthquake takes place at, uh, at that time what is going to happen the pore water actually the pore water pressure is going to increase right so once the pore water pressure is going to increase the the particles losses its shear strength and there is a collapse of the structures you can see the how the structure having collapsed uh, due to the loss of shear strength so this is all about your today topic. Tomorrow we shall talk about the next topic. Thank you very much.